every day of your life, in everything that you do. We've been told by the members of the choir that we should trust in the Lord with all our hearts. And then you will pray from our hearts. Lay not upon your own understanding. Trust in him. Lean on him. Hope in him. Depend upon him. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we are grateful unto you for yet another opportunity to come before the throne of grace to hear you speak to us and prepare us for a better and a glorious future. Even as we lean on you, trust in you, depend upon you. Lord, speak to us. Take us from where we are to where we ought to be. Lift us up high that we may be kings and the priests that you have ordained for us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, today we are looking at uh, a message that is very, very important and uh, relevant to us as children of God together. You know, in the last uh, few weeks, uh, while we were busy working on our regional conference center in Kingston, I always travel on 95. I've been traveling on that road. I've been seeing what I just saw. But because I travel on that road more often, going and returning, going and returning, there is a place up there that is a place of fun that children always go from time to time. Some of our youth have been there before. So it's nothing really new to me, but what appears new is the message I'm getting from, from it. And the place is called King's Dominion. How many of you have heard of that before? Praise the Lord. Somebody say King's Dominion. And then this particular day, it, it struck me, King's Dominion. Who are the king? And what kind of dominion do they have? What makes them to be king? And then I look at the Christian life. I look at the believer's life. And then I look at the word of God and I see that the reality, of course, they have that as the name of their business. But we indeed are the kings that have the dominion. And I prophesy to somebody here today that in the name of Jesus, you will rule. By the power of God, you will reign. And then as I look into the scripture, I look into the very first book of the Bible. And the very first chapter of the Bible. And then I see that this authority, somebody say authority, to rule and to reign has been given unto us from the time of creation. Unfortunately, not all of us have come to that understanding. Not all of us have come to that realization. And not all of us are living in that freedom and the liberty and the authority and the power that is vested upon us. I declare the purpose of God for your life will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Somebody open your Bible with me as we turn to the book of Genesis chapter 1. I look at it from verses 26 through to 30. And God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness and let them have dominion. Somebody say dominion. Over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air. And over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. Somebody here today has been blessed. I said somebody here today has been blessed. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful. What's happening to somebody today? Fruitfulness and multiply. How about you? Multiplication and replenish the earth and subdue it and then have. 
over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. You will not lack anything. And to every beast of the feet of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. A better one. A glorious one. God is saying. That I am God, I have created all things, and now I am created, creating you. And God is saying, please understand the scripture very well, that I made you, he said, I am God, I show myself, I reveal myself in the form of a man. And then he turned around and said, I made and created myself in the form of a woman. And so then, your gender is not your limit. I said your gender is not your limit. God is saying the same power and the same authority I vested in the man, the same I have vested in you as a woman. That means, whatsoever a man can do, a woman can do it. I said a woman can do it. In the name of Jesus, king's dominion. Yes, generally when we use the word king, it refers to the male. But understand also, it's because of, that is the title. And if you are a female, instead of saying a king, who are you then? You are a queen. You're a queen. You're a queen. And then, by virtue of your title, by virtue of your position, you're supposed to rule, you're supposed to reign, you're supposed to have dominion. You will have it. I look at three points. Number one, king's description. Who are kings? Let's take a little bit of looking into who are kings. And then you look into yourself, you look into your life, and then you want to know who you are. If you don't know who you are, I always tell you this, if you don't know who you are, you will not know what you have. If you don't know what you have, you will not know, somebody help me, I've said this so many times here, you will not know what you can do. If you don't know what you have, you won't know what you are up to. You won't know your ability. You won't know your authority. You won't know the grace and the power of God upon your life. And so, as a king, you rule and you will reign. Come to that passage of the scripture again. Where we just read Genesis, what is the chapter? Chapter 1, what verse? And God said, and God is saying to somebody here today. I said God is speaking to somebody here today. That your status is about to change. That your situation is about, is about to change. That your limitation is about to be over. That a new age is beginning in your life. In the name of Jesus. And God said, let us make man in our image. Any other image other than the image of God represented in your life. I banish them today in Jesus name. He said, after our likeness, well, after, look, look at it, when he says, after our likeness, begin to look at the likeness of God. You know, people say, like father, like mother, like daughter, like, uh, like mother. You want to look at what is the likeness of God, and then you want to begin to look at, uh, at yourself. Do I look like my maker? Do I look like my God? Do I look like the one that made me to look like him? It will happen to them. And let them have and let them have and let them have dominion 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 and that is the message we are getting today and uh, when we talk about king they are people that rules 
over a set of people within an environment, they are men of authority within their confine and the confine of the authority vested upon them. Listen to this. Every king have a limited authority vested upon them. This is what I'm talking about. As a king over this city, you only can rule over the city here. Am I right? Can a king over here go and rule over another city? No. In order for you to rule over the other city, you have to go into war with them. You have to be able to conquer them and then you rule over them. Otherwise, you are limited to your domain and then the other king over there is limited to his domain. But the kind of king we are talking about, the king after the likeness of the almighty God is an unlimited king. So then the Lord is saying to somebody, understand that person say, and God said, and God is saying, you are unlimited. Talk to someone and say, and, and tell somebody you are unlimited. Tell somebody you are unlimited. In the name of Jesus, look at it. The, the, this unlimited power and authority was vested on us from the beginning. Look at what the Bible says. And have dominion over the fish of the sea. Pay attention here. There are people that say the forces and the powers troubling them is from the water. The water spirit. The marine spirit. The man-made spirit. And the word of the Lord says you have power. You have authority over them all and over the fowl of the air and some says there are powers in the air that operates in darkness and you know the bible says we war not against flesh and blood but against what somebody help me here principalities and against power and then i can hear somebody rulers of darkness where in high places and then it talks about and uh, what's the last one? Spiritual wickedness. Spiritual wickedness. Pay attention here. Rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, the powers of the air are under your control. And over the cattle, and over all the earth, over all the earth. Now, pay attention here, pay attention here. King's dominion. The Lord is saying that there are some people that goes into the bush, into the forest, and then they put some things together to work against you. And the Lord is saying, even over all those voodoo or medication or powers, whatsoever they may be, you have dominion over them. I say you have dominion over them. That then tells me that no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. I said no weapon formed against you will prosper in Jesus' name. Because you've been created in the image of God. It is the image of a king. It is the image of authority. It is the image of power. And you will rule. And you will reign in the name of Jesus. The kings of the earth always inherit this tool from their predecessors or progenitors and then when they finish serving their time they transfer to the heirs, the successors men of earth appoints the king elects the king but I have a good news for you you have been ordained by the king of kings and the lord of lords in the name of Jesus your authority and power is not from any man it is from where? I said it is from where? It is from above and nobody can take it away. Nobody can deprive you of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Kings rule, you will rule. Kings reign, you will reign. Now let me tell you something. There are some things we look at in life. And then you, you look at the animals in the forest. Maybe I should throw this question to you. I have the answer. I know the answer. I have it here with me. Amen. And then you look at all the animals in the forest. And then they say a particular blind... Um, I'm almost giving you the answer. I know somebody still misses it anyway. 
and they say a particular animal is the king of the forest what's the animal lion and jesus is a lion of the tribe of judah i thought i get a very good love unto the lord the lion of the tribe of judah they say the lion is the king of the forest and then understand that is on the earth look at genesis chapter one again and then look up with what i'm telling you not just that he tells you about the, the fowls in the air and the, all the other creatures in the air and then when you look at the balls in the air there is a ball that is called the king of the air what is that ball? the ego you are an ego i say you are an ego ego soars high you will soar higher i say you are so higher fire cannot contain ego the fire of this world will not destroy you water cannot stop ego the storms and the waters of life will not hinder you amen i will still talk about ego down the line maybe by the time i get to the third part because some of you here is going to mount up with wings as eagle i said you will mount up with wings as eagle that means every limitation in your life is coming to an end in Jesus' name. Right now, there is somebody here that your life, is, your life has no limitation. You have tried this failure, tried that failure, and it's like there is blockage everywhere. The Lord is saying to that individual, your doors are open. The walls of limitation and of partition are coming down by the power of the Lord. The Lord is saying, you were made an eagle from the beginning, and from today, you begin to soar higher. This is the month of August. It's a month of new beginning. Something new is beginning in somebody's life. Something new is beginning in somebody's family. And so it shall be in Jesus' name. Understand, we're talking about kings that rules and reigns, not by the dictates of man, not by the authority vested on them, but by the authority of heaven. Look at your Bible from the book of Proverbs chapter 8 verse 15. It says, By me kings reign and princes decree justice. Kings reign and princes decree justice. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9 is now trying to open your eyes and take away the cloud from your eyes and take away the darkness from your eyes. And then he said unto you, but you are a choosing generation. Somebody just means that. You are a choosing generation. Pay attention here. The Lord is saying that it's not just you, but as for as many that will come into the uh, family of God, they become that part of that generation, and you have been chosen. You have been ordained. You have been equipped. You have been empowered. It says a royal priesthood. Can you see the kingship language there? Royalty is right there. And then it says priesthood. This are, there are two things combined here. There is something about priesthood. The priest, they have connection with God. They have contact with God. They connect with God on behalf of the people. And then he's saying it's not just it's, it's the priesthood. The priesthood is the spiritual. The royalty is the combination of the spiritual and the physical. And then he says you are a royal Priesthood, when you say something is ordinary, the other one is superordinary. When it says uh, 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 extraordinary, when you say something is special, the other one is unspecial. You're a special person. I say you're a special person. You are a chosen generation. Somebody say amen. A royal priesthood. Somebody say amen. And holy nation. Somebody say amen. The next one is a peculiar people. Talk to someone and say you are unique. Tell somebody you are special. Tell somebody you are peculiar. Now tell somebody I am peculiar. I don't know about you. I know about myself. I am peculiar. And then they say that you should show forth the praise of him who had called you 
called you, made you, created you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. When you go back to Genesis chapter 1, you, can, you will understand that the world was full of darkness. And then darkness over everywhere. And then God said, let there be light. Light is coming to somebody. Light is coming to somebody. Light is coming to somebody. You know, I heard of the story of somebody that was sick with cancer and was dying and then a friend of her was concerned and burdened and then was praying and said Lord my friend is dying I need a word of encouragement for her what do I tell her and eventually God said go tell her let there be light how do you tell somebody who is sick and dying let there be light and then she said Lord I need something more cogent, something more serious, something that will touch her, something that will make her. And uh, the walking go tell her, let there be light. Light is coming to somebody. And eventually, reluctantly, she called a friend, not knowing what to say. And then eventually, she forced herself to say, well, friend, I was praying, and I asked the Lord for a word. And the Lord said, I should tell you, let there be light. And the friend that was there said, thank you so much. And God be formed. Amen. And then the following day, somebody said the following day. I said the following day. After today, the day following today, you will be a testimony to your miracle. She was at the hospital for a follow-up. And then they connected the, all the gadgets to the body. And then to see where things are regarding her state. Of course, she knew, the doctors knew, the family knew she was dying. And then as they connected everything, and then they began to see light in different places. Light in different places. And then the doctor said, come and see. When God is done visiting you, I say when God is done visiting you, you will tell people, come and see Others on your behalf will say, come and see. And then the doctor said, all these lies are indication that there is no more trace of cancer. Light is coming to your way. Light is coming to your life. Light is coming to your family. In the name of Jesus, you are a choosing generation. You are a peculiar person. Romans chapter 5 verse 17. For if by one man's offense, then death reigned by one. Much more, they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Somebody will reign. You will reign over problem. You will reign over trouble. You will reign over sicknesses. You reign over affliction. You reign over oppression. You reign over limitation. You will reign over the storms of life in Jesus' name. But then understand. When you're king, you are an honorable person. What did I just say? Kings are honorable. Kings are reverent. Kings are respected. Kings are worshipped. The enemies of your soul, of your life, are coming to bow before you. Because you are a king. Because you are a man and a woman of authority. Authority in your family. Authority in your business. Authority in the church of God. Authority in your community. Authority in the nation. But please understand. Understand. Some people don't understand authority. That to be a king, I told you in Proverbs 8.15, it says, by me, kings reign. That means, without him, there is no king. When you see authorities over you, please submit to those authorities. Am I communicating? When you see power over you, submit to those powers. Don't rebel against those authorities. 
because you are also a man under authority. If you don't submit to higher authorities, lower authorities will not submit unto you. This is one thing the church has lost, which has made the church to lose its power, but it's coming back in Jesus' name. That's why the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. Don't just honor them, but give them what? Double honor. Double honor. Double honor. That is the word of God. And it says, especially, that means you give double honor to everybody, but then especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. The word and doctrine. The Bible went further to say in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 17 that obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your soul as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable for you. You will not be a source of sorrow. I say you will not be a source of sorrow. You will not be a source of sadness in your environment in Jesus' name. Amen. God is the God of all flesh, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And the Bible says that the loving kindness of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him. So if you are going to enjoy this authority, you must operate in the fear of the Lord and in the righteousness of the Lord. Psalm 103, verses 17 and 18, Psalm 103, verses 17 and 18 says, But the loving kindness of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. On those who fear him, can you see that? On those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember his precepts to do them. Remember his precepts to do them. So that gets me to the second point. The king's domain. Well, see, the description of the king. They were created by God. Ordained by God. Empowered by God. Put in place by God. The kings we are talking about have no limits. Whether things in the water or underneath the water... Whether things in the air, whether things on earth, why the kings of earth are limited, the kings of God are unlimited. These are the kings we are talking about. And these are kings that works in righteousness and purity. I will talk more about that as we get to the second point. The domain. There is no king without a domain. Am I communicating? There is no king without a subject. There is no leader without the people that have been led. And so, we want to look at the domain, the, do, the, the environment, the habitation of the king. Come again to Genesis chapter 1. I look at it from verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And then the second part says, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over everything. So we see the environment of the environment of the oppressions of the king in that passage of the scripture. And the word of the Lord makes us to know that this environment this environment we are talking about, pay attention here, is an environment that brings all things under your footstool, under your control. We are here on earth. This is our domain. This is our habitation. And there are all kinds of things all around us. And the word of the Lord is saying, that by the authority of God, you will rule and reign over everything and situation in Jesus' name. But then, the kind of habitation I'm really talking about now, 
I'm talking about the habitation of righteousness. I'm talking about the habitation of holiness. Where the king himself must be. Because, pay attention, I have been to many cities. I have been to different nations. And I realize that the king's house is always generally in the center of the city. No wonder the Bible says, let your light so shine before men that they may see and glorify your father who is in heaven. If you have not been to villages and cities, you are here in Washington, D.C. Am I right? Where is the king's house in Washington? I know some of you are wondering, do we have a king? Yes, you have a king. The king over the nation of America. And this is the capital of the, of, the, of the king. We call him president. Amen. Where is it? The king's house. The president's house is right there in the downtown. Downtown. Where anybody, everybody can easily see. Pay attention here. And I like the way they put it. They say it is white. Amen. I don't know how they came about that. Maybe because the founding fathers of the nation were uh, believers or Christians. I don't know what they call it. Why? But pay attention here. If you are going to be the kind of king I'm talking about, your heart must be white as snow. You must be living in purity and righteousness of life. All men may not accept you. All men may not receive you. But understand, if you are the king from God, by me, kings reign. That means you first of all must have the king reigning on the inside of you. That means you must be born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus died for you, he died for me, he died for everybody. And he wants us to be within the environment, the domain of righteousness, the domain of purity, the domain of holiness and of uprightness. It's not enough to say, I go to church. It's not enough to say, I read the Bible. It's not enough to say, my name is a Christian name. You need much more than that. You must be born again. Tell somebody you must be born again. Every king Pay attention here. Every king wants their domain to be peaceful. Am I right? That then means as a king, you must follow peace with all men. Am I communicating? King's dominion. You must follow peace with who? One person, only two people, some men. How many? All men. Follow peace with all men. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. That is the word of the Lord. That is the word of the Lord. It will come to pass in your life. Psalm 15 verse 1. Uh, we are actually reading the whole chapter. But the good news is, the whole chapter contains only five verses. Psalm 15, are you there? Verse 1, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle, the domain? Who shall abide in thy tabernacle, the dwelling place of majesty? Who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh how? uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that by biteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. In whose eyes a vile person is contained, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own heart and changeth not. 
He that putteth not out his money to usury, you don't take advantage of people, nor taketh reward against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. I need an amen. amen. Psalm 24, verses 3 to 6. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place, the domain? He that hath clean hands, you are not a thief, and a pure heart, you are not imagining, imagining evil, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the law, and righteousness, righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is, what's the next word now? The generation of them that, does what? Seek him. That seek thy face, O Jacob. Sila. It means pause. Think about this. If you must be a partaker of this glorious inheritance we are talking about. If you must be a beneficiary of this glorious heritage from God unto us, then we must be those that are sincerely seeking the Lord in holiness, in righteousness, in purity, in uprightness. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. Chapter 6, verse 16. And what agreement at the temple of God with idols? What agreement at the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. Who lives in the temple? I'm asking the question. Who lives in the temple? God lives in the temple. And where is the temple? Somebody. You are the temple of the living God. And if you want to rule and reign as a king, then... You must be pure and holy. I read again. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall be my people. God wants to dwell in you. God wants to rule and reign in you. And in order for you to be a king with dominion, you must have God on the inside of you. You must be what I call a God carrier. Did you hear what I just said? Can you, can you repeat that? Can you say it in a better way? You must be a God carrier. That means anywhere you are going, you are pregnant with God. Anywhere you are found, you are loaded with God. Amen? Because he said, I will dwell where? In them. In you. When God is in you, righteousness is there. When God is in you, truthfulness is, is there. When God is in you, uprightness is there. When God is in you, then you will not be a thief. You will not be a liar. You will not be a fornicator. You will not be an immoral person. When God is in you, you will be doing the will of the Father. Galatians chapter 5. I look at it from verse 19. Galatians chapter 5. Maybe I should back up to verse 16. Verse 16, it says, This I say, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the laws of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, 
barbarians, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envies, mothers, drunkenness, reveling, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That is the domain, the kingdom of God, the blessings of God, the righteousness of God, the power of God. You will inherit the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 27. It says, My tabernacle also shall be with them. Yea, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. The Lord will work it out. The Lord will make it so. In the name of Jesus. So, when we're talking about the domain of the king, is the domain of righteousness. If it is the domain of holiness. It's the domain of uprightness. It's the domain of godliness. It's the domain that is filled with the light of the Lord. Let there be light. I said let there be light. Your life will shine. Your life will glow. In the name of Jesus. Now we've seen who are the king. We've seen their dominion. Uh, their, their domain. What then is the dominion of the king? Because the Bible says, again, let us make man in our own image. 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 After our likeness. And let them have what? Dominion. Over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So, God created man in his own image. Stop right there. Put your finger there. Don't close your Bible. I'm telling you something today that is not something that is about to happen. It's something that has already happened. You have been created that way already. All you need to do is to begin to function in that office. So, God created in the past tense. Created in the past tense. Created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And then God blessed them. Somebody is blessed. And God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. And replenish the earth. And subdue it and have dominion. You can see the word dominion is coming again. And coming again. And coming again. And uh, somebody here is destined to be fruitful. Destined to dominate. Destined to have dominion. In the name of Jesus. Understand then that kings, kings, real kings, don't mix with the wrong people. Real kings don't fellowship with the wrong people. Real kings don't go to the wrong places. Real kings don't eat just anything. Kings, the real kings, they walk respectively. They walk honorably. They do things that are honorable. They speak things that are honorable. They go to places that are honorable. They walk in an honorable way. No wonder the Bible says that People that are diligent in their duties will stand with kings. You will stand before kings. And not before mean people. Not before mean people. Not before mean people. You know, I heard of a particular man, actually the richest man in Africa. And then he was talking about himself. I'm talking about how he got to where he was. He already was a diligent person, very hardworking. And by virtue of his hard working or hard work, the Lord has lifted him up, and the Lord will lift up somebody here. And so one day, the king of his country, the president of his country, had a vision. 
and I say vision. I mean, something to do in the nation. A vision to, to, to turn things around in the nation. A vision for a change is coming to your life. And the king, the president, thought of who do I talk with? Look at him. See, yes, that a man who is diligent in his business. I know the man I'm talking about. I never met him. But hopefully, I will meet him one day. Amen? If I mention him, many of you will know him. The president called him at 3 a.m. What did I say? 3 a.m. And called his name and said, are you sleeping? What are you supposed to be doing at 3 a.m.? Sleeping. And then, this man said, Your Excellency, I am awake, sir. Even if I was sleeping now, I am awake. Is somebody here still sleeping today? Is somebody still sleeping? You will wake up. I said you will wake up. When your time of change will come, you will be wide awake in Jesus' name. The president said, do you mind seeing me by 7 o'clock in the morning? And the man is in a different town, different state, far away from where the president is. And he said, yes, sir. You know people that will mount up with wings as eagle? They will be men that are ready to move. By 7 o'clock, he was there with the president. And then the president said, I call you in the middle of the night. Pay attention to it. When things are about to happen, things happen in the middle of the night. Amen? When it was time for Mordecai to be elevated, it was in the middle of the night that the king could not sleep. Am I communicating to somebody? It was in the middle of the night. When a chain was about to come to the land of Egypt, it was in the middle of the night the king had a dream. And when Nebuchadnezzar was to be rejected and, and sent to the forest, it was in the night. Things happen in the night. The best is coming your way. I said the best is coming your way. Miracle is coming your way in Jesus' name. Miracle of turning point is coming your way. Great revelation, deeper revelation, God's revelation, revelation of change in the name of Jesus. The man got to the president and the president shared his dream and then they spoke. Meanwhile, the president had this vision. Looking at Africa, they had, then had Millionaires and billionaires, but not a single one in terms of dollar. And the president said, how can this be? How shall this be? And so he called this man. Heaven will call on you. And the man said, sir, this is what we can do, this is what we can do. To cut a long story short, from not having a single billionaire, the president, eventually we got to know, had the vision for 50 billionaires within the nation in terms of dollar. I had the testimony from the man himself. The president couldn't accomplish that, but he ended up with about 35 billionaires. God will remember you for good in the name of Jesus. But you've got to be diligent. You know why I'm saying this? There are people that say they are Christians. We are kings. And all they do in their life is pray, 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 pray. They are very lazy. They won't go to work. They won't educate themselves. They won't develop themselves. They forgot the Bible says that faith without work is dead. Your life will not be dead. So as you pray, understand prayer works on something. What do you want your prayer to work on? 
what are you doing that you are saying, Lord, bless this work that I am doing? That's why I told you the story of the man diligent because the Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs chapter 22 verse 29, seest thou a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings. I'm telling you because you are going to pray today, but don't just end up everything here. Let your prayer get you into doing something. Let your prayer put you into a vision, a dream of what you want to become in life. Let your prayer put you to work. And miracle will happen. In the name of Jesus. Now that said. Jesus said. Behold, I give unto you power. Power. To tread upon serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Pay attention here. You want to do things. You want to accomplish things. But there are serpents and scorpions, enemies of progress, that will want to hinder you. The Lord will hinder them. I said the Lord will hinder them. He said, I give unto you. It's like only the people here are awake right now. I said I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. No matter what the serpents and the scorpions may be, the fire of God is coming upon them in Jesus' name. You know, I told you about ego earlier on. That ego to us hard. And we learn that there are two categories of eagle. The royal eagle and the golden eagle. And they stands for royalty and authority with power. They eagles exercise authority and dominion. No enemy can withstand the eagle. No enemy will be able to withstand you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Do you know the...